This is Duke University. Will you please bow your head and join me in prayer? Our God, our God who sees us, who hears us, who calls us, fall afresh on us. Allow us to hear our calls. Allow us to know what we need to forsake and what we need to embrace. This we pray in the name of the one who saved us all, Jesus Christ, amen. So, this is a great honor for me. It's a humbling honor. But on behalf of the senior class 2016, I welcome you to Duke Divinity School and for sitting in that place today. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a round of applause. For just <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to start. Now, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, so I'm going to get started. And I get excited. When I get excited, I go a little fast because I love it. And I love the scriptures, love the text. And I just have to say how grateful I am to be here. So shall we roll? Let's do this. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and start in verse 16. And I'm doing it from the King James Version. Grew up with that. I can't seem to switch very easily. But 16. Now as he, he being Jesus, walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Verse 17, and Jesus said unto them, come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. I'm going to stop right there. Now Mark likes to fly. That's the book of Mark. Mark, Mark is aiming to work you towards the atonement, and so what happens is that he just flies by things. This is the first chapter, and you're already getting to the call, right? He's already gone through John the Baptist being in jail. He's gone through, just gone through. So this call story looks really fast, and John loves the word immediate and straightforward. He loves that word. Things just happen like this for, for Mark. So Mark is moving this, this time place very, very fast. He says, straight way, straight way, straight way. Okay, thank you, Mark. <laughs> I'm here to use a little biblical imagination, if you will allow. This story of come, and these men, in verse 18, straightway, they forsook their nets and followed him. Straightway, immediate, forsook their nets and followed him. I've been thinking about that. I'm like, could I just be in the middle of my job, doing what I do every day, and Jesus said, come, Fatima, drop that, follow me. <laughs> Dubious, doubtful. But Mark thinks it's very, very fast. At least he relays the narrative extremely fast. I'm going to say that what Luke does, Luke tells you there was a miracle even preceding this. But for me, getting to Duke Divinity and sitting where you were and where you are was not fast. I didn't straightforward follow anything. I got my PhD in 2012 and had my fourth kid, my daughter. At my dissertation defense, I nursed her in the middle of my defense. And then she proceeded to poop over everything. <laughs> As I was wiping up fecal matter and putting my breasts back in my bra, yes, I did say that from this pulpit. Because guess what? Mothers are believers, and mothers work too. So after I did that, they said, welcome, you have, and congratulations, you have earned your PhD. And do you know I just took off like, I'm a doctor, I'm a doctor, <laughs> as I wiped that poop off. Now, <laughs> for my social location, which I've been asked to do in numerous classes and I'm grateful for. I grew up Muslim, converted to Mormonism. And somewhere along the last line around the time that I was defending my dissertation, I felt a call in my life to preach. And I didn't know what to do with that. So I sat in church 
a church that doesn't ordain women and wondered what to do with this. And much like Jeremiah, I felt like a fire was shut up in my bones. And I, I wanted them to give me a chance to do something with this call that was just kind of wrestling with me and kind of buried inside of me. As a woman of color, as, at, at this site that I'm in, I wanted them to see me and allow me to live out my call. And it wasn't going to happen. So I started applying for jobs because I'm like, surely I can teach. I got this PhD, seven years worked with this. Seven's a holy number, but it wasn't so holy the way I was doing it. <laughs> and I couldn't get a job to save my life. My dissertation chair calls me, she goes, everyone's been hired, even people who are ABD. For those of you who don't know me, it's all but dissertation. They haven't even done their dissertation. And my colleagues were hired left and right. I was the only one left in my class not hired. And I, I, I tried to go to church, and I'm like, well, I can't teach professionally, so why don't I try it? In church, something, something in me has got to teach. And then a friend of mine said, after a year and a half of this, why don't you go and go for an MDiv at Duke Divinity? I went, uh, no. <laughs> How am I? after so many years of education, gonna sit at Duke Divinity and be a student for another three years. But every door had closed for me. It just started slamming and slamming and slamming and I tried to crack windows and I tried to budge anything in my life like anything. Just give me a chance to teach at church, to teach in the academic world, and it just kept slamming shut. And so I applied to Duke Divinity out of frustration. I applied to it just because I'm like, whatever, And then two weeks later, they said I was accepted. So I sat back there at orientation with my Tar Heel t-shirt on, and I just went like this. <laughs> Could not believe that God would ask me to let down this net. You can't mean to come like this. I'm gonna let down my PhD net. I'm gonna let down that dream for what? To sit for a student for three more years? Come on, have I not done enough? And I was a spiritual toddler. I have those moments. You ever dealt with a toddler? They're, re they're just irrational. <laughs> they throw tantrums. Even though you know what's best for them, they have no idea what's best for them. So, I did not come straightway, though it may look like that when I rewrite the narrative. <laughs> or maybe not. I'm telling you that when Jesus, Jesus is the d divine disruptor. That's who Jesus is. Jesus disrupts. Your plans, that's the divine disruptor who tells you, go ahead and lay those plans. Think you should be ordained this way, or your life looks this way, or this is your profession, or do X, Y, and Z. And then Jesus turns it all upside down and tells you, let down that net. Let it down. I got a diff, you're still gonna use it, but this is gonna take a whole different turn. I'm gonna make you Peter Nash. I'm gonna make you fishers of men. So you see him turning that around, turning that around. And the thing is, though, I, what I couldn't take, I'm like, they forsook it. They just, boom, leave it. In the midst of here and coming here the last two years, I had to leave behind a religious community that had loved me for 24 years. And I had to let down that net. <laughs> Oh, and how it hurt. But Jesus said, come, come. And it wasn't how I thought it would look. And he's like, Fatima, you're going to teach in a different way. Fatima, you're going to be a fisher in a different way. I'm telling you today that when you sit in classes and you're being butt up against that theology that you think you have,
When you sit in a womanism class, a black theology class, or Christian theology, or Dr. Portia Young's Old Testament, or any of the teachers out here are fabulous, and it starts to rub and grate against you, and theologically you're gonna have to let down some nets. Don't hold too tight, because Jesus is gonna disrupt that. So you may think you know when you sit here. In fact, you may think you're certain. Go ahead and get ready. <laughs> Go ahead and get ready. Because if you even begin to follow and begin to know and be a acquainted with Jesus, he's going to disrupt that. He's going to ask you to lay down some nets. Let them go. Come on. Because in order to follow, remember, it's come and then forsake. Come on, let that go. Come on, let that go. It's almost like you can't come until you let go. You can't come until you let go. You may know. I don't know. You know, when I got into my spiritual formation group, I said to them, I'm going to apply for the one-year program. I'm out of here in a year. So I went to Reverend Shea, who was over at admissions. I said, hey, how hard is it to switch to the max? And he goes, well, we prayed about you. <laughs> Never a good sign. We prayed about you, and we felt you needed three years. <laughs> Not even an MTS. Not two years, they felt I needed three years. And as I encroach on my third year, I say to God, I'm not ready. Don't let me go in a year. I didn't realize I was broken in so many places. I didn't realize I needed to be healed in so many places. I may not be ready. Bring your brokenness. Start to face the fragility of your faith. Go ahead. Take this time. And, and as a community, I have never in my life felt more surrounded by people who are asking the big questions of God and their church, and they're the most faithful people I know. So go ahead and call out God in the mess. See where you can find God in black death. See where you can find God in same sex gender and same sex marriages. Go ahead, let's do this. You didn't come here to not lay down a net and come to Jesus. You're sitting here means that you're making the first step. You're gonna come to Jesus, but you're gonna have to let down some things. Go ahead and let your faith be shattered. There's beauty in the shattering. It took me to the end of my second year to get on my knees and thank God for disrupting my plans. It didn't take me long, though, to realize that the, my colleagues or the new community that Jesus provided for me so that I would have a soft landing. Because as I left one community, I was lonely. I didn't know what this looked like. And in this audience, you'll see some of my professors, my friends, who have held me up as I've asked the hard questions. Go ahead and look at your new community. Look around. Hold each other up. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I may have to get rid of some nets. Go ahead. I'm going to have to get rid of some nets. Go ahead. It's a little Baptist in me. I'm working on it. I'm Muslim, Mormon, Baptist. It's coming. It's coming. And in all that, in my Islam, in my Mormonism, the traditions have taught me 
And I even did a field day in the Methodist church that I absolutely loved. Each built in me something beautiful. There are beautiful truths that I stand side by side with you on. My last. Welcome to the divine disruption. Drop those nets. Come to Jesus. Follow Jesus. Forsake that which will not get you to the next point. Forsake that which will not breathe healing into your soul. And know this. God loves you. God knows you by name, by struggle, by tear, by wound. Know that. That's the God we believe in. Hold on and know when to let go. And no, it's not Kenny Rogers. It's just, this is me. <laughs> I'm grateful for a God who sees us all. Come. This I leave with you for my prayer and my prayer that we forsake anything that will not bring us to Jesus. And that you may find a blessed journey here and long after here. In the name of Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross for us all and rose again. Amen. <laughs>